Hi everybody, uh, I'm James Tully. I am the film programmer and marketeer here at the Connaught Cinema. Every film that you've seen here over the year would have been programmed by me, so you've got me to thank or hate for that. Uh, today we're going to run down the cinema staff's top 10 films of the year. Um, we have a really diverse range uh, of staff here at the cinema and I think the list of films they've chosen reflects that. Uh, I'm sure by now you've been inundated by various publications, best films of the year or best films of the decade, but obviously ours is the most important. Um, I actually think outside of film critics, cinema staff are the ones that see the most films. Like they're here day in, day out. They not only watch all the good films, they have to watch all the bad ones. Not only do they watch the bad ones, they have to watch them more than once. They'll watch those bad films over and over and over again. So spare a thought for them when you come in and see them toiling away, having to watch Last Christmas for the twelfth time. Not that Last Christmas is bad, it might be good. Who knows? So at number 10, we have uh, Avengers Endgame, uh, the finale of Marvel's magnum opus franchise. I think it's easy at this stage to feel like, oh, those movies were always a success, but to think back that Marvel actually took things pretty slowly, made films kind of one by one, and then managed to build this huge mega world with over 20 movies, and then wrap it up in a bow in Avengers Endgame, a movie that seemed to please everyone has gone on to be the biggest film of all time, I think is a minor miracle and will be remembered as one of cinema's all-time greatest feats. And now our staff have put it at number 10 in the top 10 movies of 2019. At number nine, we have If Beale Street Could Talk, which is Barry Jenkins' kind of somewhat muted follow-up to Moonlight. Uh, it didn't get a great response from audiences, but I actually think it's as good as Moonlight, if not better. Uh, the story of like the power of love versus the power of the law, amazing performances, great soundtrack. Uh, I really hope it's one that audiences manage to catch on, on Blu-ray or, or TV, maybe as the years go on. But our cinema staff saw it and loved it. Its fragmented storytelling style is reminiscent of Moonlight, uh, and that's, I think, why our staff have put it in at number nine. At number eight, we have The Lion King, the live action slash animated remake of the 1994 classic. I think John Favreau and his effects team did an amazing job, but they worked so hard to wonder whether they could. They stopped to work out whether they should. I hated it, but the staff here all liked it, and it really connected with the audiences. So here it is at number eight. In at number seven, we have Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, a real homage love letter to old school Hollywood, which again, old school movie fans absolutely lapped up. Quentin Tarantino is no stranger to controversy, and he had his moments here, which people certainly didn't like, especially the depiction of Bruce Lee, uh, and the ending, which took a twist on, on real events. I personally felt like it was in keeping with the film, it was putting a Hollywood ending on a Hollywood story. Um, and for that, I really liked it. Our staff did too, it's in at number seven. At number six, we have Doctor Sleep, the uh, much belated sequel to The Shining. Uh, I think it's a miracle that Mike Flanagan made a movie that was generally regarded to hold up quite well to The Shining, which is one of the all-time classics. Uh, audiences stayed away in droves, <laughs> so I don't think it was fairly judged. I think in years to come, people will see that movie, reappraise it, and decide that it was good. I think not enough people saw it to even decide whether it should do well or not, and it just flopped on release. Um, our staff all loved it, which is great, because it only played for a week. Um, so I'm really glad that it kind of worked its way into their hearts. Uh, and I hope if you didn't see it, maybe you get to see it on DVD or home release soon. And we come in at number five with actually my personal favourite of the year, which is Midsummer, Ari Aster's follow-up to Hereditary with an amazing central performance by Florence Pugh. Uh, I can already tell she won't get nominated for anything for this movie, which is a crime. In years to come, we'll, we'll look back and go, why wasn't Florence Pugh nominated for Midsummer? Because she's absolutely amazing in it. The mood, of the whole thing is great. I actually thought maybe I was the only one that liked it, so I'm really glad it's even come in this high, number five in our staff list. Although on my personal list, it's number one. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it, although it's not an easy watch. It's really long and quite grim, but it's a beautiful film to watch. At number four, we have Joker. Um, I don't think anyone expected this to be any good. Like when they announced there would be a Joker movie from the director of The Hangover, I don't think anyone really thought that a movie come out would have echoes of Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy and be a mood piece about mental health. Um, but it turned out to be a really fantastic movie. 
Although the movie itself, I think, really hinges on Joaquin Phoenix's central performance. I'm not sure really if the movie would succeed without him. It's almost like a sequel to You Were Never Really Here, but with DC undertones. I don't know, this might be DC's first good movie. You can argue in the comments below. At number three is Green Book. Uh, or as I like to call it, A Lesson in Why Racism is Bad from the director of Dumb and Dumber. Uh, personally didn't like this movie at all. I'm really bamboozled as to why it connected with people, but it really did. I mean, it won the best picture at the Oscars this year. Uh, went, took a bazillion dollars and won loads of awards just around. I just am baffled by its success, to be honest. I saw over 140 new releases in the cinema this year. And on my personal list, this one came in at about number 80. So I'm really surprised it's coming this high. But hey, if you liked it, get down in those comments and tell me why. And coming in the penultimate spot, number two, we have Rocket Man, uh, hinged on an amazing performance by Taron Egerton and directed, of course, by Dexter Fletcher, who was on a real high after salvaging Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, I feel like it doesn't quite get to the bottom of what who Elton is a person and relies somewhat on the musical numbers. But when the musical numbers are that good, like who cares? And Taron Edgerton is great. Uh, it's just a real feel good, fun movie about an alcoholic and drug addict at his lowest ebb. And so now we get to the end of our list with our Connaught Cinema staff's number one favorite film of the year, which is of course, the favorite. Um, I really like that this is our top movie of the year. It was released in, in this cinema January the 1st, so the fact that it's stuck in our staff's mind all years and kind of thought to them, oh, what well, they really liked that film. And again, it's easy to kind of judge it as like, of course it was going to be a success, but it's actually quite a tough watch in places. It's a very dark comedy from a distinctly art house director coming off the back of Killing of a Sacred Deer. Again, another really tough watch. But I think Olivia Coleman obviously is a, a national treasure who everyone loves and she really helped that film kind of go to success over here, winning the Oscar for Best Actress. Um, I think it's a very worthy winner of our Connaught Cinema Top 10 Films of the Year. So there you have it, that's our Top 10 Movies of the Year. Uh, what do you think? Were your favourites in there? Is there something else that we ignored? Let us know in those comments, we would love to have a discussion with you. Um, also, I want to just take a couple of minutes to say thank you for coming to the cinema over the year. Every time you buy a ticket or come to see us, we really appreciate it. We know you could go elsewhere, so we really thank you for those visits coming in to see us. Just looking up over the next couple of months, we've got some amazing films coming up for you. January, February is kind of Oscar season, so we're talking Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler, 1917, the new movie by Sam Mendes, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood with Tom Hanks, The Lighthouse, just absolutely incredible, Jojo Rabbit, and two of my favorite movies already of next year, which I saw at the film festival last year, are Portrait of a Lady on Fire, beautiful French film, uh, comes out here on February the 28th, and Parasite by Bong Joon-ho, just absolutely incredible film. So we've got those for you in the new year. So hopefully we'll see more of you in the new year. And uh, let us know what you think of the list and we'll see you soon.